Alright guys, we just opened the box up here on the front fork cartridge kit um, for this 2019 uh, Road Glide and uh, I'm going to show you all the pieces that it comes with and what we're going to need. They send you the Fox fork oil that we're going to add to both of these legs and here we have the fork cartridge kit which goes in the right fork leg. And here we have some negative springs, which will not be utilized on this bike. They're for 2014 to 2016 models. We're going to reuse the stock negative springs. And then we got the spring here that goes in the left fork leg. It's going to replace the stock spring that was in it. And then this is the Fox extender tube we're going to replace the tube that was in the left fork leg with this tube. And then we have a spring spacer that is going to replace the stock spring spacer in the left tube. And we have a washer that they say to replace with the stock in the left leg with the uh, stock tube, but they're the same washers essentially. I don't think it's going to be needed, but we'll discuss that later. So uh, we'll get started. Okay guys, so uh, here I'm gonna talk about the difference and why the Fox upgrade kit is better. What we get with these uh, touring modeling Harley Davidsons and a lot of Harley Davidsons in general is they have, they bought them out a lot. They're, the suspension is really, really soft on them. This is the stock spring that come out of this 2019 touring bike and this is Fox's spring. Now um, there's a couple differences you can see here immediately. This spring is shorter, the stock spring is shorter than Harley Davidson spring. Theirs is a little longer and also these coils here are different than these coils here and the, the coils on the new Fox spring are consistent from top to bottom. This is what you call a progressive spring. Um, initially when this spring is fully extended, when the forks are fully extended out, by compressing that spring this is a different rate and that's a different rate which gives you a lighter spring. So it gives you a more plush ride but it also creates more bottoming because this as a whole is a lighter spring than this over here. And also, I don't know the exact rates on either of these springs, but the windings on this spring are a lot thicker than the windings on this spring. So overall, this setup is a lot stiffer of a setup. You're not going to notice yourself bottoming out over bumps and harsh G-outs as much as you are with the stock stuff. And uh, we're going to ride both. I've already rode the bike, and Bob, the owner of the bikes, rode it plenty, and we have agreed that it's way too soft. Um, now I'm going to touch on that cartridge kit, which we don't have a picture of right now. We just installed that in the video you watched. Um, the benefits of that cartridge is, um, you're, for one, you're separating the oil that your bushings are riding in and that your cartridges is cartridge oil. There's different oil in the cartridge than there is in the actual tube, so that oil stays cleaner and you don't get all that bushing debris and bushy material from the rubbing and the sliding action of the fork. And what is inside that cartridge is actually shim stacks. You have compression and rebound shim stacks, so it's a more controlled flow of the oil through that. Um, as to where you've just got a damper rod set up and there's holes drilled into those damper rods on the stock stuff, and that um, just gives it, creates a softer feel as well. You're not using as much force to move that fluid as you are with the uh, cartridge kit. It takes a little more force to move that fluid so it's not as springy of a feel. Um, so that's just a little bit of the description. Hope it explains it. You can uh, leave messages in the comments if you'd like anything better explained. All right, now I want to introduce the real star of today's video and it's this double-sided crescent wrench that we found in a farm shop. And we're gonna utilize it today to uh, take these cast aluminum pieces off and just be careful when you put these back on they don't require very much torque all right so for torques we're going to use a t27 and go in from the side 
get these two torque screws out from the cell. Probably wouldn't be helpful to tell everybody that we're working on a 19 rug guide special. Which a lot of you guys probably already knew that just by looking at it. Same thing over here. And again, during reinstallation, uh, these don't require a whole lot of torque. Just keep in mind that you're threading into plastic here. All right, so this piece will come forward. Um, don't really roughhouse it at this point. There's a single connector on the back. It's going to uh, disconnect this entire gauge bezel as long as you don't have any accessories down here in the accessory port. And the tabs on the side, now when these are new, these tabs are pretty flexible. But if you're working on a bike that's a little bit older, um, these can dry out and they can crack off on you. But either way, we want to be careful. <clears throat> we'll go over to the other side. There's one connector down here on the bottom. We're going to undo as well. And it's a regular uh, push style connector. You don't have to, it's not connected to anything of any importance right now. Okay, so our uh, GoPro camera had a little difficulty there, so we'll pick up where we left off. Anyway, uh, this is the connector that goes to the back of the bezel. Here's the tabs I was telling you about. So just be careful with them. You can use a pick or a pocket screwdriver. These are the two that come up to the accessory ports. And it's kind of a pain in the butt because the release form is up against the plastic, and you'll see that. But here's where they go. And they just pre-wire for anything you might need later on. And a little off, off topic, but if you're ever wondering about heated grips, this is the connector for heated grips. It's pre-wired for the bike, and you can see I just ran it up the left side to the potentiometer over here, and then it's pre-wired to the right, so that's too easy too. Okay, so now that we're to this point, um, these right here are the two clamps that hold the top of your fork leg in and it just sandwiches into the triple tree. They are a quarter inch L. We're going to use a 3 8 ratchet and just carefully back those off. You're getting in kind of close to the tank so but a regular snap-on Allen like we're using will work fine. They don't require a whole lot of torque. You'll notice that when, they're, when you're taking them off that you don't have to be He-Man to loosen this. And they don't have to come all the way out either. Okay, now we'll be back here in just a minute because believe it or not, that is all we have to do up top here. All right, so we got the bike back up and we're gonna get started on the bottom half here. Um, first thing we're gonna do is take the fender off, <coughs> quarter inch Allen. Just gonna break it loose and then um, finish it with the finish it with the Milwaukee here. Now again, these are you don't have to be He-Man to. Um, mess with these. I'm surprised it even ratcheted right there. Taking the fender off first to just, I, I prefer to do it that way. It's, it's a, it's technique, but with it off here, you don't run the risk of damaging it anyway. So if you happen to drop a brake caliper or something like that, or some type of slide of hand, it's not that big of a deal because it's not on. All right, next we're going to go to the front brake calipers. And these are pretty easy. It takes a 10 millimeter 12 point socket. You cannot get it with a 6 point socket. And we'll go ahead and take these off and break them loose with a ratchet, same as we did with the fender, and then finish them off with the Milwaukee. Again, these have a little bit more torque to them, but still don't have to be He Man. And keep in mind when you're doing stuff up here with the brakes that you are tightening down into aluminum. And when we get this off here, just always remember, you don't want to pull the front brake lever because the calipers still will come out, whether they're on the bike or not. Be careful your ABS sensor here. It's this guy right here. He's gonna go down and he runs in between the wheel and the, and the fork. So we don't wanna rough house that guy. The wiring harness does. All right, so. Come over here. We'll do the same on this side. Now, using a Milwaukee or an impact or something to take these off is, is one thing, but I definitely wouldn't just uh, go to town on them when you're reinstalling it. Now, the weight of the caliper isn't necessarily going to uh, cause a problem with your brake line. If you do prefer to hang them up there, by all means. Hang them up somewhere, especially if it's going to be apart for an extended period of time or you're going to be running it up and down on the lift or something that cause it to bounce. All right. So now our next thing is we're going to pick the front of the bike up and we're going to remove the axle and remove the wheel. 
and then we'll look at uh, dropping the front fork. Okay, so we got our bike up off the ground here, and we're going to uh, pull the axle shaft out of it. For this, we are going to use the Milwaukee, because I don't think you have to worry about the Milwaukee breaking that off. <laughs> no. So it's 24 millimeter, and remember not, not to mess with the right side. Start over here with the left with the 24, so you hold, the, hold your axle down. And we, uh, we did loosen that before we turned the camera back on, just so that it wouldn't ratchet through there and blow you guys' eardrums out. Now over on this side, there is a pinch bolt here, right here, and this cinch is down on the axle. There's a there's an open spot. If you come over here, you can see it. Right here at the bottom of the fork leg. So what this does is it pinches that together and keeps this from moving forward back. And we got a convenient little hole right here that we're going to use to pull this out. Nothing special about that whatsoever. All right, uh, we'll be back here in a minute because for safety's sake, we're gonna use two of us to remove this rear tire, or front tire since we've got it up off the ground here. Um, but one thing before we do this, since it might, may not get to see it on the camera, your ABS sensor's right here. So just uh, take note of where the spacer is and where the sensor is. And you guys that have worked on older models, you'll realize or come to see that that's very similar to how the old speedometer cables ran off the front wheel. So just to orient the space is exactly the same when it goes back together. You will not get the desired result. And this one over here, there's only one on these newer models. And you can see the engraving or the marks to it or to the outside. So give us just a second. Got our wheel off. We're ready, basically ready to drop these front forks out of the triple trees. Um, we're going to be messing around with the bike, maybe moving it around a little bit. So we went up and we went ahead and hung our front brake calipers up there to keep the weight off of our brake line so we don't want to damage them. Now this nut up here that actually holds these forks together is a 12 millimeter Allen. And what we've done here is we just took this out of the snap-on Allen set so we didn't have to have two or three of these and just simply put it in a 12 millimeter socket. And what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna break these loose right now and get the forks draining while we're doing some other stuff to save a little bit of time. So we'll go ahead and uh, break these loose. She should start draining any time. Now with negative pressure on these, it takes them, as you can see, they're a little bit slow. And same thing over here. These can kind of be a bear to come out, especially as the bikes get some age on them. But if, you're, uh, if your forks have been serviced on time, then they shouldn't give you too much trouble. And doing it this way with, with the Milwaukee or you know, 3 8 air ratchet or whatever, you're not up here you know, turning to the side and, and, and really jocking the bike around too much. So a little, a little bit safer. So now we've got those undone, give them a second to start pulling the oil out of them. And while these are, while these are draining, we're going to go and make sure that we have our tools for doing the rest of the job here. And we'll be back in. What do you do when you loan your four steel driver out? You make a new one. When you loan your tools out and forget about it and you need one, it helps when you work in a suspension shop with a load. Alright, so our fork seal driver that we loaned out and forgot about uh, causes us to have to make one. So while that machine's turning out, we're going to go ahead and drop these the rest of the way out for you. Okay, so on the back of the lower part of the triple tree, these two screws right here are the same style of pinch pinch screws that are up top that we did earlier. Can you see those all right? Yep. Okay. So quarter inch Allen. And we'll go ahead and remove them. And I already broke one of them loose. We'll just undo the bottom here and have a hold of your fork tube when you do this. Because a lot of times they'll slide right out of there on there because they weigh about 25 pounds each. So. I got a little bit of momentum to it. All right, here we go. And how she comes. Now when this gets all the way down to the bottom, have a good hold on the top of it and just easy does it because you don't want this thing to bang around and damage the inside of your can. All right, and the, the next thing too, 
you seen on the last video clip or a little bit earlier when I pulled these bottom uh, bolts out and the oil was running real slow. What we ended up doing, because we didn't want to wait forever, was taking that out all the way, letting it, the oil drain out and then just putting it back in because that bolt actually holds this assembly to this assembly or vice versa. So when you pull down on that, you don't want to pull the fork tube apart as you're trying to reinstall it. So sounds like our uh, fork seal driver just finished up over here. So this fork tube uh, uninstallation or removal is exactly the same as this one. There's literally no difference. So we'll just skip over that for the time being. We'll go check on our fork seal driver and get these ready to take apart. All right, so we've got our, we got our fork tubes out of the bike. So we're gonna bring them over here to the bench and take them apart. And uh, which side are we doing right now? Okay, this is the this is the right hand side. So this is the side that the cartridge is gonna go on. And you can see when we've done the run through there that the cartridge is already pre-assembled. So the first thing that we're gonna do when we get this in the vise, now notice this vise here has a cutout just for doing forks. There's a bevel or the there's a V notch in it right here. Okay, they sell fork to fork tube holders as well. The reason I prefer these is for reassembly, which you'll see here in just a little bit. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take a pick. We're gonna go after this C-clip and you can get it started and then work, it, work your way all the way around with it. There's several recesses in there, but just be careful because it can actually come out of there and uh, fly around like it, it, it can be a version of a Jesus clip. Okay, so since we have that undone or that what that allows is for our fork seal to separate itself from the body Now the same or the same bolt That we used or that we loosened to drain the oil is what we're going after now. We're going to go ahead and completely remove it and That's what holds these two assemblies together Okay, so to remove this bushing and stuff up here is a real real uh, complicated process. What we're gonna do is take this and just kind of move it down a little bit. You don't have to be He-Man with it, just a few just a few soft bumps like that. And that will separate your lower leg or your body from the slider. Okay, take a look down in here right quick. Can you see that aluminum cup? Mm. Well, you can see the hole of course, but let me see if I can get that to the side. Well, maybe not. You can't really see it on the camera. Anyway, there's there's an aluminum cup down there, and the position of that's really important for reassembly. But right there is what it should look like. For this next part, we're going to remove the cap and access the inside of the fork tube. Um, I'll say this once, I'm going to say it several times, and you'll see it here in just a second. There is spring preload here, and there is a fair amount of spring preload here. You have to be careful when you're taking these apart. When I say a fair amount of spring preload, if I take this wrench right here and I just undo that, this fork cap is gonna go up and hit the ceiling. But I'm gonna keep steady down pressure on this. And I'm gonna back up. There. Now I was pressing down on that pretty hard and I'm not, uh, a champion bodybuilder or nothing but if I wouldn't have had a good amount of downforce on that you see what could have potentially happened so be careful here's our stock spacer which uh, we're not going to reuse here's our stock washer that just simply sits in between the spring and the spacer and stock spring and here's your negative spring that was uh, you seen in the kit that came with some new negative springs we're actually going to reuse this uh, factory negative spring as stated before the supplied ones are for the 14 to 16 model years only okay so there we have it completely disassembled um, if you're doing this for the first time, you can do a little bit better job of laying this out than I did. And always, uh, you, can, you can get into your service manual and it will give you a detailed description on how all this goes back together. But realistically, there's only a handful of parts. And it 
is basically it. Okay, so now that we have everything all apart, this is a good opportunity to take note of the orientation of these three pieces here. And we're going to slide this off. And we're going to slide this out of here. And check the Teflon on the inside of it. So what you're looking for is burrs or any uneven wear or anything like that. But this one looks like it's still good. So if, if your bike has, like say you're, you're you know deciding to do this at 30,000 miles or something like that, the kit to, to replace all these is under $50. So this bike doesn't have many miles on it and it's in good condition. And I'll probably have it back apart at some point. So I'm gonna choose to uh, reuse these old ones. All right, now here's our new fork seal. Um, when, you, when you install these, just remember any spring seal that the spring goes towards the pressure. So we've already pre-installed some, some KYB grease on here. So the top of this is slightly tapered. So you can push that down really easily. And then uh, the bolt that holds the whole thing together actually has a bronze sealing washer on it. I would always recommend replacing these. So, <clears throat> where we are now is ready to put this back into the vise and put it together. All right, so we're gonna, uh, we, have, we will have to take this loose again to put our oil in. But what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna make a part of this assembly with this aluminum cup that I showed you a lot easier. So, we got plenty on that, we don't have to worry about any explosion or nothing. So we're going to take this out of here, set it on its side, and now we're going to install our aluminum cup. And it's going to go right over the end. And what this keeps you from having to do is take this body and keep it straight up and down and try to line this up and this up with that small little spot in the bottom we're not going to fight that so here we go all right so when i pushed up on that you seen the top of the, the slider move, so I know that I contacted it. Because if your cup doesn't sit in there right, then you won't get it. And you'll think that you're making progress when you're actually not. So we got it finger tight, we'll go ahead and put it back in the vise. And again, I mean, keep in mind when you clamp down on this that this is a hollow tube and you can distort it and bend it. So again, I know I've said it several times on the video, but we don't have to be He-Man to do this stuff. Okay, so we're ready to install our fork seal. I already kind of just pushed it down in here by hand. It fits, it fits down in there and goes out or comes together the same way that it came apart. I do want to touch a little bit on how easy it would be to cross thread this, this new cap that's, that Fox sends with the cartridge kits. This is made out of aluminum, and you're pressing down, you got a lot of things going on. So if you, if you feel like you're cross-threading it, you're probably cross-threading it. All right, this is our handy-dandy fork seal driver that we made. It slides right over like this. And this one's a little bit light, but we're gonna see what we can do right here. And we are in. All right, how much can you make these for, Drew? Oh, about 30 bucks. So $30, you can have a CNC machined fork seal driver, similar to this one, only taller, the way that it should be. Okay, so, sorry about that, I got ahead of you. We're going to reinstall our fork seal clip. Um, I don't know if you can see in there. And this is how, this is how you tell when you're, when you're down far enough on your fork seals. The groove right here is where the seal fits. All right, so hopefully everybody can see that. And uh, this is really easy to put back in there. You can start basically wherever you want, but main thing is 
when you when you push this down carefully with a pocket screwdriver I'm, or whatever I'm using to pick with is that that sits all the way down in the groove and this one is right now all right so um, that's it time for a well it's time for fork oil. And we're, we're gonna we're gonna be really abbreviated on the left hand side because a lot of it is exactly the same as what we just done. Only there's a, a couple of spacers and stuff that are different, so we're gonna hit on that. So, All right. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and install our oil. As of right now, we have heard that Fox is has recommended both their oil, the PTFE infused five weight, and Harley Davidson Type E. Um, I'm going to start using the Fox oil and, and see how it works. And if we decide, or if I decide that I don't like it for one reason or another, we'll simply take the axle out, remove the bottom nut, drain it, and reinstall Type E. So, all right. So a little bit more controlled that time. Now they recommend 450 milliliters. So that's exactly what it's going to get. This cartridge was definitely pre-filled with oil from Fox. Now there is, uh, in the instruction manual, the procedure to go through for when you change these out, um, that you have to you have to pump them a certain amount of times and stuff. All that information's in the manual. None of it's too complicated. All right. Okay, so we went ahead and uh, took apart the left side. Yeah, it came apart the same way as the right. Now the differences between the right side and the left side is uh, we don't have a cartridge kit that's that's pre-assembled for us. So on this model, we're going to reuse our negative spring. So this is going to go on the bottom of the extender, just like this. It rides a, right up here by this bevel. And we've already installed our new fork seal. We're going to let this slide down to the bottom until it comes out. Okay, now we're going to put her in the vise. And on top of that, I guess I should have showed you when it was out here. On top of the extender tube, there's a 13 millimeter nut, or bolt rather. And we are going to go down through the top and get that guy. And that is going to help us when we reinstall our body for tightening down this bolt that holds them all together. Which again, we've got a new bronze seal washer on. All right, so installing this is easy peasy. It just sits up there like so. And we can do it the same way as we've done the last one, only we're a lot more controlled because our extender is all the way through the bottom. We already know it's protruded through there. And we can install like so. But remember, don't do like I just did. Get your uh, aluminum cup. All right, I just locked out right there and dropped that aluminum cup right where it needs to be. Anyhow, aluminum cup is down inside here. You can see on this one, we've done it a little bit different than on the cartridge. Um, we, we put the bolt through the bottom first and then put the aluminum nut over the top of it. But the main goal is that it goes right around the side of that guy. And we're gonna uh, slide our body up here. Got it? Yep. Okay. And tighten this from the bottom. All right. Now we'll give you a demonstration here, real quick. I'll go grab, was that a 3 8? Uh huh. So, what this is going to allow us to do, and we'll, we'll torque this off camera here in a minute. I need another one too. Yeah. But you can have. You can have a, a ratchet up here. You can also have one down here on the bottom, and you're going to keep that from spinning around inside of this lower body. So it's a, it makes it a heck of a lot easier to do this on the bench. And you can hold it yourself, or have your buddy hold it, or or whatever. But we're gonna we'll just finish reassembling this one off camera, or do this part off camera. We'll be back here in a second with the top spring and the different spacer. All right, so um, we're going to reuse our stock fork cap on this one. So we've uh, lubricated a new O-ring. We're going to replace that. 
Always a good practice. A little, little added assurance from about $1.50. All right, so we're going to put our box spring in here. And now, since, since we have our, our bottom bolt tight, our fork seals installed, we're just going to go ahead and add our 450 milliliters of fork oil now, just so we don't have to pull this back apart here in a minute, like we did the last one. And there it is. So um, the reason that I wanted to hit this a little bit is because you're using a longer spring with a shorter spacer. So we're going to use the Fox spacer on this one. So it sits down there just like that. And um, we'll go ahead and reuse our stock washer and Fox spacer. And that's basically it. I mean, aside from tightening this cap back down, which we can do off camera, um, the next time that we fire this up, we're going to be reinstalling these in the bike. So, bam. Okay, so what we're doing now is I'm trying to hold the camera and, and get ready for when he pushes us up here. We're going to put the fork back in the triple tree. Um, go ahead, Drew. A little bit. All right, what we're looking for is there's, there's a little bit of a bevel at the top of the fork tube. And at the end of that bevel where it flattens out is exactly where we want that to meet with the triple tree. Come up about three-eighths of an inch. A little bit more. And you can see, I don't, okay, a little bit more, a little bit more right there. Okay, now you see where the edge of that bevel stops and the flat part of the slider starts. Oh, she came down on you a little bit, Drew. Okay. Hang on, let me loosen it one. Okay, I'll, I'll be a little bit better on the game this time. Like this. Go ahead. Yep, right there. Okay, so that is where Harley-Davidson recommends that these run. And the torque on these is 14 to 18 foot-pounds. All right, and you're going to do the same for the other side. Um, I think as far as the mechanical part of the video, we're probably going to cut it off here because the reassembly is basically the polar opposite of the disassembly. So this is always a great time to clean little areas that you don't get a chance to clean very often. Never mind my big oxygen sensor. I'm running some wide band there. But I mean you got a you got a couple things off that you don't get off here very often. You get it up on the lift do a little bit of cleaning. Um, this is not the end of the videos on this bike. We're uh, we're gonna do a ride height video on it and we're also gonna do a comparative of uh, taking the stock shocks. We're gonna run them on the dyno and you can see exactly how much difference there is between um, the Fox Street Performance Upgrade to the stock stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you liked it, tell us you liked it. If you thought it sucked, constructively tell us why you thought it sucked. And in the future, we'll, uh, we'll try to keep stuff like this coming. So thank you very much.